We discussed many times the Torah is divided into three parts. We're not speaking about the Beit Odin Chavir Beit Amalam Hakom mitzvos, which between man and God and man and his fellow, but rather the certain mitzvos which are actually rational laws. As Rashi always cites the Midrash that even if Torah wouldn't have stated them. Just to maintain ourselves as a society, we would actually legislate these laws like stealing, damages, ownership, all these various laws. Because you cannot maintain a society unless these laws are in place. Then there, there is what we call Eidus, Eidus is testament to commemorate things of the past we have mitzvahs which relate to, to a testament to the redemption, to commemorate the clouds of glory in the desert, which is Sukkos. Shuos is the receiving of the Torah at Sinai, various things. Then we have chukim, chukim are statutes. Statutes are laws which, which if the Torah would not command them, we'd never come upon them. For instance, dietary laws. Wearing wool and linen, which is shotness, one's not permitted. These are chukim. The Paraduma, the red heifer, is the ultimate statute, which even Shlomo Melch had said, Rechokim Yemen, it's beyond him, although he was able to fathom the understanding why the statutes have to be in place. Paraduma, he could not understand the rationale. Even with his unlimited genius, he was never able to understand it. And here the Torah begins, If you follow my statutes, that's you follow my statutes, you observe my mitzvos, and you do them. So very important Rashi here, which is really the Midrash. When the Torah says, if you follow my statutes, maybe this is referring to the observance of the mitzvahs. But the Pesach says immediately the verse, and you observe my mitzvahs, evidently, if you walk in my statutes, it's not referring to the fulfillment of the mitzvahs. So immediately afterwards, the Torah tells us, and you keep my mitzvahs. What is the meaning that if you walk in my statutes, two are made in my Torah. That you, when you study the Torah, you should toil in the Torah. It should be within the context of toiling. So a person studies the Torah, learns the Torah, but he does it without toil. He's not fulfilling the b'chuksai te'lechu. That that you have to toil is a statute, which we'll discuss in a moment. V'smitzosai tishmru, Habu amelim batora amnas lishmor ulakayim. Meaning, when you study, it's not be study just for the midst of studying, but you study the Torah for the sake to be able to retain it and to fill the mitzvahs properly. That should be the intent when you study. It's not studying just there's a mitzvah called studying Torah. We're not even speaking for the sake of intellectualism. You're studying Torah for the sake of the mitzvah, but you should have in mind that when you study it, it's with the objective to be able to retain it and to fulfill the mitzvahs. Boshe Nemar, as it says in the Pesach, limartem osam, you should study them, ushmartem lasosam, and you should retain them to be able to actualize them. This is called lumen amnas lasos. You study amnas lasos. No, the, there's a Gemara in uh, two locations which cites two psukim where the Novi says the chesed of Hashem is until heaven. And other statement the Novi says, the prophet says, the chesed of Hashem even transcends, surpasses heaven. So the Gemara a- answers one of two answers. A person who studies Torah Shlo Dishmo, if you study Torah not for the sake of the mitzvah itself, but with an ulterior motive, then it activates a force that Chesed Hashem is Adla Shamayim. 
Meaning it's within the realm of nature. But if a person studies Torah Lishma, it's Lamalam in Shemaim. It goes beyond heaven. That's one answer. The other answer is that a person who studies Torah for his own observance, which is fine, then it's Ad Shemaim. But it's, you study Torah, Lumer Lamed, it's not only to study it, to observe it, and retain it, but to teach others. You take on a responsibility for Klal Yisrael, that it, that's Me'al Shemaim. that's above the heaven. It even surpasses heaven, that's the value of assuming the responsibility to teach Torah to others. But over here right now, we're only speaking about within the context of one's own self. When you toil in the Torah, you're toiling in the Torah for the sake of retaining it and observing it. That is the intention. It's infused. It's not only for the sake of the midst of studying, but it has to be coupled with this other intention for the sake of retention and actualizing it to do the mitzvah correctly and properly. That is the emphasis of the studying. It's, it's interesting. I mean, the many things we could study which have no relevance to our lives, let's say today, you study the laws of the sacrifices or anything we study, many things have no relevance to us. You study the laws of Kohanim, that a Kohen is not permitted to contaminate himself to the dead or is not permitted to marry certain women, such as a divorcee, or the high priest is not permitted to marry a widow, laws which only pertain to certain segments of Jewish people. But every Jew, when he studies it, it's lumer amnas lasos. He studies it and toils in that study for the sake of retention and to actualize it. Actualization doesn't mean to say necessarily it applies to you, because if a person has an obligation to be available to teach others, that's within the lasos. The losos is, since there's a concept known as kol Yisrael Reb that all Jews are responsible for one another, so to be able to make that information available to others, that they should understand exactly how to perform and how to behave, that goes into lasos, that goes into actualization of the Torah. So it's not only the Torah, for instance, there's a mitzvah, there's a mitzvah to inform, when you see a fellow Jew, failing, transgressing, or not being aware of his obligation, you have an obligation to inform him of his obligation. Every Jew has that obligation. So if a person doesn't study, how is he supposed to inform his fellow Jew that he's not observing what he should observe, or he's transgressing when he should not transgress? So therefore, every aspect of the Torah which has relevance to some Jew at some level, therefore, you study it for the sake of its retention, and in addition, its actualization doesn't necessarily mean yourself, but even what applies to others to make that information available to others. But there's this aspect of you must toil. It's not enough to study it. You must toil in the Torah. And that, will, as we'll see, that will generate a special level of bracha when you toil in the Torah. To you, amel in the Torah. Amel. So it's not enough just to study it's not even enough to do it lishma, to do it for the sake of the mitzvah. One has to toil. That's a key element in the Torah to bring about, to generate this level of bracha. We find in the Tochacha in Parshish Kisovo, which is the towards the end of Dvarim, when we speak about the Tocha, it says, the Torah tells us, why will God forbid the curses come upon the, the Jewish people? Al asher lo avaratim Hashem elokechem, you did not serve God with joy and with good heartedness. It doesn't say that the reason why the curses God forbid will come Jewish people because they didn't observe the Torah. It's because you did not serve God with simcha, with joy, and to have I mean, why are they subject to curses? Because the simcha and the to have is lacking. You put on tefillin, you observe the Shabbos, you ate the matzah, you sat in the sukkah. I mean, why is this considered such a serious shortcoming that if you, not, you didn't do it with joy and you didn't do it with good, good heartedness? We had said regarding the Churban Abayus, the destruction of Isamigdosh, there are two Gemaras which seem to be contradictory. 
One Gemara says that the reason why the first base Amigdash was destroyed was because they violated the three cardinal sins. Gila Raishvit has done and That's what was this, it was destroyed. And then other Gemara says, cites a Posuk in Echo, which was written by Yirmi Hanovi, Jeremiah the prophet, is the elegies. He witnessed the Churban Abayis, the destruction of the Besamigdosh. He writes, Ash El Asher Ozum is Torosi, because they abandoned my Torah. That's why the Besamigdosh was destroyed. And the Gemara says, What is the abandonment of Torah they studied? But rather, when they studied, it was not predicated on Birchas Torah. They did not say Birchas Torah before they studied the Torah. What, that's a separate discussion. Why not saying the bracha prior to studying is actually a shortcoming in the study of Torah. It's a failing in Torah. It's lacking in its purity, in its, in its value. But it's, that's what it says because they abandoned my Torah. So was it the three cardinal sins or was it not studying Torah properly? So how do you reconcile both statements? One is explicit in the... Megillus Eicho, in the reading of Eicho, and the other is also, it's based on Psukim, that because they violated three cardinal sins, so the answer which is given, which we gave, that what gives a person the ability to take, take control, of, control of his life, to suppress all his overwhelming inclinations, not to kill, not to do idolatry, not to commit adultery, incest, whatever it may be, this is the Torah itself. This is Barasi Yitzhak Barasi Torah Tavlin. The antidote to the evil inclination is the study of Torah. So because they did not, didn't study as they should have studied, the antidote was not in place. Once the antidote was not in place, therefore they fell to a level because of the lack of cl- clarity to do the three cardinal sins. So one was connected to the other. That's the reason. It's the same thing. If a person saw, serves Hashem, you value God's word and you serve God with joy and good heartedness. If that is the case, there's always that sense of indebtedness to God because all that he provides for us, it's a privilege to serve God. On that, in that context, one doesn't tarry. One does things with zeal, with alacrity. One does, does it with feeling that you're privileged. But if you don't do it with joy and with good heartedness, ultimately, eventually, it becomes overbearing. It's like pushing a boulder up a hill. And when you feel that you're, be, you're burdened by it, just a question of time before you start leaving it and ignoring it and not attending to what you should attend to. Because you don't see its value. But if you serve Hashem, then it's guaranteed you see it as something special and it's privileged to be involved, then the person not only will not regress, he'll advance, and continuously upgrade his quality of service of Hashem. The same idea. When you toil for something, for what do we toil? We toil for something we value, or we see as a necessity. Something that's a necessity, especially we see it as having special value, we toil for it. And as a result of that, it's not enough just to study Torah and to observe the mitzvahs. It's only if you study it in a, in a context where you toil for it, which you indicate and show that this is the most special involvement aspect of your investment in your life, because you toil for this as you toil for nothing else, as a result of this, it will generate the ultimate level of brocha, which is what the psukim follow, that there'll be a level of bounty, which is uncontainable bounty. That's exactly why this element of amelus, the toiling, it's not enough to toil to study, but it's the toiling to make sure that you retain it, and that you should be able to observe the mitzvahs meticulously, that is the emphasis, that's the focus of a person's mind.